is the news and talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. All right, 403 the time. I I want you to listen carefully for a second. Just like with this uh, shooter in Florida, police called to his house 39 39 times. Just, uh, that's, well, um, it was obvious that this kid uh, was off the rails and probably should have been, uh, and I know it's very, very, very difficult, if not impossible, probably should have been confined, confined based on the fact that He just wasn't right. Well, it was revealed this weekend. Remember uh, the Orlando shooting? Guy walks into a gay nightclub, shoots and kills 49 people. 49 people. Now, this came up in Saturday's protest, rally, march, whatever you want to call it. You know, if it weren't for weapons like he had, we wouldn't. Okay, blah, blah, blah. You know, you can almost forgive them because they're teenagers. They're being used by adults, primarily on the left, being manipulated into a a national movement. Well, I would suggest that maybe you need to look at the people a little harder. It was revealed that the Orlando nightclub shooter's dad was an FBI informant. And he brushed off his son's terror threats and comments as him just being, and I quote, stupid. The dad, revealed to be an FBI informant uh, this Saturday, told authorities who were investigating Mateen, Omar Mateen, before the attack, that the pro-terror comments that he made to co-workers were just examples, and again, I quote, of him just being stupid. FBI Special Agent Martin who was on the stand in the terrorism trial of Noir Salman, that was Omar Mateen's wife, this guy's son, said Omar's father, Sadiq, had called him while his son was being investigated for the comments in 2006, a decade before the attack. As a matter of fact, not only did they brush it off, but eventually determined he wasn't a security threat And they even considered turning Omar into a confidential informant himself. So, with all due respect, kids, instead of, you know, trying to draw in, and again, probably not your words, I don't think these teenagers came up with the NRA on their own, because they all say the same thing, don't they? The teenagers all say, well, if uh, the NRA didn't contribute so much money to the Republicans, would you think they came up with that on their own? No, they're parroting something they heard someplace else. And by the way, the NRA is far from the largest donor. I think, what are they, ranked like 11th, 12th, something like that. I don't know. Um, maybe we ought to take a look at what's behind the hardware. Sounds like we had plenty of notice with this guy and Sadiq, his dad was an FBI informant. I'm guessing he's doing something else now. Um, and the same thing with this kid in Florida. If we would put that much time, money, and resource into saying, okay, this kid's got a screw loose. He's sitting in his room playing school shooter videos. And by the way, isn't that, uh, yeah, that's explosive cord. And, uh, what remains of a sawed-off barrel of a rifle, well, all of which, by the way, were laying in full view, plain sight, in the Columbine shooters, maybe then we would actually get somewhere. Uh, Grady, Grady, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Grady? I'm doing good. Thanks for asking, Rick. Uh, hope you're doing well. You I enjoy bet. your show. Thank you. Um, th- you played this last hour, and I'd kind of like to respond to a soundbite that you played by President Obama, and I, I'm... Wondering exactly how or what are these kids doing that adults are afraid to do? 
Um, oh, that's, yeah, what he's talking about, if you're just joining us, I was saying that these kids are being manipulated uh, and used and played, much as the Democrats did the black communities. Uh, they're playing these kids as well. And Obama comes out and in some form of cheerleading effort saying these kids are courageous, doing those things adults won't do. What is that? And and I guess the, the catchphrase that they that – I'm so tired of hearing now is they're increasing awareness. Uh, okay, well, exactly what does increase awareness? I mean, does gun violence really need more awareness? I think it's probably pretty out there. And, you know, some of my dad used to always say the whole thing is all hat and no cattle. <laughs> you know, my grandfather used to say the same thing. As a matter of fact, since I've got you on the line, uh, for those people that don't know what we're talking about, I'm not going to play the whole thing, just a second of it. Um, this is exactly what Grady is talking about. Um, a number of the young students in this school, Parkland, organized a rally. They decided we're not going to be silent victims of the gun violence that is so pervasive in the United States. Uh, we're going to do something about it. And these are young people. They're 16, 17 years old. Uh, and today, there was a march in Washington with hundreds of thousands of people. And these rallies were duplicated all around the world. And this was all because of the courage and effort of a handful of 15 and 16 year olds who took the responsibility that so often adults had failed to take. In okay, what, what does that mean? First of all, they weren't 15 and 16 year olds. Um, independent surveys say that uh, about 90% of the participants all across the nation were of voting age. That's your red flag right there. Right, right. And, and really, raise your hand if you're for gun violence, please. <laughs> Can we take a vote? Everybody for gun violence. And last thing, my dad's a retired educator. He, in, in, the, in the summers, he uh, taught driver's education. Hey, kids. If you die before you're 25, it's going to be in a car crash. Okay? It, statistically speaking, it'll be a car crash. Yeah. Well, it's, um, you know, there's a story behind this story, Grady, and I think you were astute enough to pick it up. Um, they didn't come up with the NRA on their own. They didn't come up with NRA donations to political parties on their own. Uh, Chucky e. Schumer, uh, Obama, and everybody else coming out of the woodwork cheering these kids on is a crime in itself. It's like they've been victimized twice. I agree. Grady, good call. I appreciate it very, very much. Uh, you know, it, uh, at the end of the day, if you want to go out and yell and scream and all of that, that's fine. And uh, You have every right to do that. And I'd be the last person uh, to diminish your exuberance. Just know what you're talking about. I mean, the, the Orlando shooter making terrorist threats, his dad's an FBI informant. Um, he was looked into, ah, he's just being stupid. Oh, okay, well, we'll let that go. Uh, I mean, maybe we ought to be taking a look at each other instead of Instead of guns, I mean, obviously gun control hasn't worked uh, to the perfect end. It probably never will because most guns that are used in crimes are illegal guns to begin with, which should tell you what. The lesson to be learned there is lock up your firearms, especially if you got kids. All right. When we come back, we're going to open up the lines. We'll let you, I know a ton of you have been waiting. We'll, uh, we'll try to get uh, your voice in the court of public opinion. You know, this has got to stop at some place, doesn't it? Either stop or let's try to take care of the problem. But you Democrats, you people on the left, you paid organizers, you know, how sad, how pathetic is it that you're exploiting the horrific tragedy in a school shooting for political ends. One person out there tell me that that's not what this is about. That is totally what it's about. Get as many of these 18-year-olds registered to vote Democrat as you possibly can and then get them jazzed up. Oh, you're, you're, it's a revolution. You're changing the world. It's just the beginning. Uh, you're doing it all. Be sure and vote Democrat, by the way.